Hey guys, hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this video, we are going to take on the loop diuretics. The prominent ones among these are furosemide, torsemide, and ethacrinic acid. So these are the topmost three loop diuretics which we often use that is pyrosamide, torsamide and ethacrinic acid. So guys before we take on the mechanism of action of the loop diuretics let's look at the site of action of loop diuretics and what is the normal physiology that is occurring at that site. So the site of action of the loop diuretics is the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle. And if we look at the normal physiology of the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle, what happens over there is that, first of all, on the basolateral side, there is an ATP dependent transport mechanism which pumps all the sodium out of the cell. So as a result of this, the sodium gradient is created across the luminal membrane so as a result of this what happens over there is that via another transporter protein the sodium is pumped from the lumen into the cell but as the sodium is pumped from the lumen into the cell via the same transporter protein the potassium ions and the chloride ions they are also transported from the luminal side into the cell now the sodium which enters into the cell via the same pump, the sodium will be pumped into the basolateral, membrane, basolateral side and will later be reabsorbed into the blood. While the potassium ions, the most of the potassium ions, they get transported via a transporter protein into the basolateral side and they also get reabsorbed while the chloride ions they will also be reabsorbed in the same manner but the potassium within the cell since it is high some of the potassium will diffuse back into the lumen via utilizing another transport protein so as a result of this all the ions which were reabsorbed of those ions some amount of potassium will diffuse back into the lumen and as the potassium diffuses into the lumen, it increases the positive potential within the lumen. And as a result of this pota positive potential, the positive ions that are the anions like calcium and magnesium, they are pushed across, they are pushed across the cells. They are pushed across the cells via a paracellular pathway and they also get reabsorbed into the blood. So this is all about the normal physiology which is occurring in the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle. But when we give the loop diuretics like furosemide, torsemide and ethacrinic acid, what do they do is that they block this pump. So as a result of the blockade of the transporter, there will be no reabsorption of sodium, potassium and the chloride ions and they will be present in the lumen and will be excreted out. So as we already know, when the sodium and potassium and other ions are excreted out, the water will also follow these ions and water will also will also be not reabsorbed into the blood so as a result of this there will occur the diuresis so this is how the loop diuretics like furosemide or semide cause the diuresis also another important point to remember is that when we use these loop diuretics they will also cause the excretion of anions like calcium and magnesium because when the pump will not work the potassium will not be able to enter into the cell so as a result of this the potassium will not be able to diffuse back and create a positive potential so there will be no reabsorption of anions like calcium and magnesium so along with the diuresis they will also cause the lo loss of anions like calcium and magnesium now let's look at the clinical scenarios in which we use the loop diuretics so the various clinical scenarios in which we can be used we can we can use the loop diuretics include acute pulmonary edema 
so in the setting of acute pulmonary edema what happens over there is that there occurs the collection of the fluid within the lungs which causes the difficulty in expansion of the lung and also the shortness of breath but when, once we administer the loop diuretic it will cause the fluid loss out of the body and ultimately the pulmonary edema will resolve second condition is the heart failure as we already know that in case of heart failure there occurs a volume overload within the system so this volume overload will ultimately deteriorate the functioning of the heart so, uh, so we use the lobe diuretics to decrease the volume load on the heart third condition is anion overdose so there are certain conditions like when we are using anions for some other purpose and we accidentally overdose the patient with anions then we we can administer the loop diuretics because i already told you that loop diuretics will cause the excretion of anions like calcium and magnesium next is the hypercalcemic states there can be various conditions in which there is hypercalcemia within the body so once we administer the loop diuretics they will cause the excretion of calcium and hence we can benefit from the loop uh, from the use of loop diuretics now next we have the potential side effects of the loop diuretics that we will cover so here are some of the important side effects of the loop diuretics the first of them is the sulfonamide hypersensitivity reaction as i already told you in the videos on carbonic and hydrase inhibitors the drugs which contain sulfur they may cause hypersensitivity reaction in certain genetically predisposed individuals so the loop diuretics are also one of the drugs which can cause sulfonamide hypersensitivity reaction the next side effect is hypocalcemia as i already told you that the loop diuretics they may cause the excretion of anions so this will cause hypocalcemia hypomagnesemia is also because of because of the loss of of the magnesium ototoxicity since these loop diuretics they interact with some of the channels or some of the transporters in the auditory system they may cause ototoxicity and the ototoxicity is increased when we administer the aminoglycosides along with the loop diuretics then we have hypokalemia and alkalosis guys whenever we use the diuretics what happens over there is that there occurs the increased production of aldosterone in response to the diuresis so what happens is that the aldosterone will stimulate certain kind of pumps that will secrete potassium and protons but they will reabsorb sodium this is a protective mechanism to check on excessive diuresis but in doing that the aldosterone will cause the loss of potassium and loss of the protons this will result in hypokalemia and alkalosis the last side effect is the hyperuricemia see guys what happens over there is that like let's say this is the nephron and this is the proximal convoluted tubule when the when the loop diuretics they are excreted into the lumen of the nephron they are excreted via some transporters the same transporters they are used by the uric acid for their excretion so whenever there will be the loop diuretics there will be competitive inhibition of the excretion of uric acid as a result of which the uric acid levels will increase resulting in hyperuricemia so this is all about the loop diuretics their mechanism of action and also the side effects of the loop diuretics if you have watched my video up to this point please subscribe to my youtube channel thank you so much